Well, welcome to Ravensdale Bible Academy. Today's course is Think Again Christian Fact Check. And what we're looking at is, is this slide, which states Biden denounces the 1776 Commission. What about the 1619 Re Revisionist History Project? And so when we look at this, one of Biden's first big moves is to promote a racist agenda that divides our country. So what we're doing is we're fact checking this. We, we want to see if indeed uh, this is a, a, a racist division that's being promoted by the president of the United States himself. Uh, one of this president's first big moves was uh, to call an executive order. That means he he did this with no approval. He did this by himself, which is always a dangerous thing to do. This was a direct attempt to undermine the history of America, to promote a revisionist history, a rewriting of history, an agenda that one proclaims that America is inherently evil and racist, and that America, and number two, that America's wealth was based entirely on slavery. And then three, that, that, that this reversal of the 1776 commission, which was a commission ordained by President Trump, is really driving a wedge in our country purely for uh, political reasons. And so when I look at this, I see this as just an absolute shameful uh, anti-American example uh, of how dangerous government can be, and really how dangerous public education can be because they're going to promote this in the public school system. And really, it looks like a, a, a traitorous statement. And so that's what we want to do. We want to fact check this. We want to look at this and say, is, is the 1617 project, is it real? Does, does it have legs? And I want to begin uniquely, actually, in Proverbs, Proverbs 23, 7. When we fact check, we include the Bible. Uh, we believe that all scripture is profitable for teaching, corrective reproof, and training in righteousness. Uh, and so we believe that the scripture has, speaks to us. And so I think the principle that we're going to learn today is from Proverbs 23, 7, which states, uh, So a man thinks within himself, so he is. So, so how somebody thinks in his mind, how he, 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 you know, assumes or thinks about a situation is going to be the way that he lives. It's going to be the way that it, his life pours out. And so if you believe that America is based on hate and America is based on slavery, well, then the result of that is you're not going to trust, trust America. You're gonna, not going to trust uh, white America, you're not going to trust the government or authority. And so it might happen that you might see a rise in things like riots, which is exactly what we saw in, in the year of 2020. If you believe that America is based on hate, and if you believe that America is based on on slavery, well, then if you, if you might notice that, well, or, original uh, documents of America include an awful lot of religious history. One plus one would mean the religious people that founded America, then they were slave, pro-slave, and so you can't trust them, which means then that Christians are pro-slave. These are the types of foundational rhetoric revisionist history that projects like the 1619 Project are trying to teach our, 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 our young students and then they grow up to be college students and then they be, grow up to become um, really militant and anti-American haters. That, that, and that's exactly what we see today coming out of the university. So we want to take a look at this factually. We want to take a look at this logically. We're going to have to put some pieces together because we're going back in history. We're going back in time. And uh, this project, if you're not familiar with it, 1619 Project was produced by 
uh, the New York Times, which is an uber liberal uh, newspaper publication. It actually won a Pulitzer Prize, which is like the highest honor you can get for, for a story or an article. So, so, so that's dangerous. That means a lot of people are giving this uh, credibility, right? They're, they're, they're believing it. And it's based again on this premise that America was founded from the beginning in racism. So when we begin our first fact check, and, and you can take a look over here, the, the first thing that should really stand out to you if you're any kind of uh, historian at all, or if you understand our country, America was not founded in 1619. If, if I were in a court of law, I, I, I would say, well, what, what are we even talking about here? Uh, you're, you're trying to convict a country that didn't exist. L let me repeat that. America did not exist in 1619. There was no such thing as America. And, and, and so, in fact, until maybe this date might ring a bell, 1776, the 4th of July, when America becomes America, the United States of America, that's when we separate from Great Britain. Why? Because Great Britain is the landholder. Great Britain is the owner. This is, this is Great Britain's land. And so the notion that anything that happened before 1776 is somehow the responsibility of Americans and, and certainly the responsibility of somebody in 2021 is absolutely absurd. So our first fact check looks at the date. The date, 1619, is silly and foolish. So there's documentation that there was uh, slaves on the boat of the British when they came over here. But the entire country was not populated. And, and so when we tend to think of slavery, we tend to think of, of the Civil War and just, just that there were, you know, uh, couple hundred thousand slaves in, in ownership and okay that that's a lot of people that's a problem but not in 1619 in fact what happens in 1620 one of the most famous events in american history the mayflower comes over the mayflower which in essence is the beginning of of america that that's 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 what we really look at as the beginning of american because the religious people who came over right and we have their diaries and their documentation, you know, Brewer, when they came over on the Mayflower in 1620, why? For religious freedom. They were fleeing Great Britain to establish religious freedom. That's in 1620. So right away, what we see is the, the, the beginning and the planting of America is really for religious pe uh, reasons, not for slave reasons. We see, in, again, the date 1775, 1770, uh, 1783 is the American Revolution. So we're not America. When we find our independence in 1776, well, within really 11 years, Massachusetts banned slavery. So it wasn't like uh, everybody in America was on board with slavery. We, we weren't, you know, let's just assume that the 1619 Project assumes that slavery is running wild it wasn't it wasn't even by the standards of blame the brits uh, there were there were people who definitely owned slaves but it, it wasn't rampant and it definitely wasn't rampant ever you know to the extent in the north that it was in the south 1794 the u.s constitution the the government of the united states is codified as the united states begins outlining the expansion of slavery and that's a very important uh, fact for for us to understand that that uh, again america was not on a path to to increase slavery i mean think about 1803 uh, the louisiana purchase where we purchased land from the french right think of the mississippi and then think of west of the mississippi all that part of america not 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 there was no slavery there that, that half of America by map never had slaves. Uh, 1808, the slave trade was banned. And so you can see that there's already the, these great tensions within America of, of whether slavery was good or not, and we wanted to have it. In 1861, 
we have 19 free slaves, free states, that means no slavery, and 15 slave states. In 1861, at the height, in the, in, in the height of slave ownership in America, there's only 3.22% of, of Southerners who even own slaves. Now, the University of Duke, which is in North Carolina, it's a Southern uh, university, they, they did a lot of research. And we have original documentation of, of the censuses of, of individuals and people and slave ownership. And so we have really good statistics on how many slaves there actually were. And, and there were about, uh, you know, over 300,000 uh, slave owners in the South and only 12 million uh, total population of people. And so most people, about 3.2%, even own slaves. At, at the most, it was like 5%. Now, you may hear stats like, well, I've heard it was 30. What they do is they'll take a family of, let's say my family, I have five kids. They'll take a family of seven people and say, well, we all individually own the household of slaves. Even at those numbers, it would only be 30%. But the real number is there's only about 5% of Southerners who own slaves. Certainly most of them did not own plantations of, you know, over 100 slaves. Uh, there were quite a few that did own slaves and really owned only under 12. And uh, we see this even from the documentation of people like, uh, you know, Booker T. Washington. So when we get to the Civil War in 1861 uh, to 1865, understand this. Because this is one of the, the, the arguments in the 1619 Project, that the United States of America, we, we are a slave country who has got its wealth on the backs of slaves and, 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 and we're racist. Really? If we're a racist country, why would we send 320,000 men to die to free slaves? I, I want that to sink in deep. What an absolute slap in the face to all those families, all those men who died, who gave their blood to sacrifice for the freedom of slaves. Slaves would not be free today if it wasn't for white people who went and died, white politicians who voted, a president of the United States, Abraham Lincoln, who pushed forth with, with great debt to the country, great cost in human life to the country, in an effort to, to right this great wrong. I want you to think of another, another statistic. 2021, here we are sitting today with 50 states. Do you realize 35 states in America never owned slaves, never owned slaves? And the 1619 projects and other um, projects like reparations that, that somehow want me and my family, who's from Mexico, to pay reparations, why? What if I was from New York? What if my family tree was from New York and my great-great-granddaddy died to free your great-great-granddaddy? Do you, do you understand how shameful that is? Do you understand, uh, what, again, what a just absolute slap in the face that is? But there's a bigger picture. We're the United States of America. The, the Bible gives us another principle. The Bible tells us what love is. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love does not seek its own. But here, here's one of the parts of what love is. Love does not keep account of wrongs suffered. You know, America hasn't been perfect in this area. America has made its mistakes. But there, there, there's a difference in having a history of, of slavery and actually uh, slavery driving our history. Slavery did not drive the history of America. In fact, that's one of the reasons why we went to war, why we went to civil war, was because the North was already going towards manufacturing. It was already racing ahead of the South and had nothing to do with slavery. And so, in conclusion, when we fact check, when we put the, all this, this together and we see our president, our president, through executive order attempting to rewrite and undermine our country's history, the 1776 commission, which is literally the starting of America, when our president doesn't understand 
the Dots American 1619 is revisionist history when we have a problem. So think again, Christian. May God richly bless you.